On the Pat Bev podcast, Patrick Beverly spoke about Russell Westbrook allegedly refusing to join that Lakers huddle during a preseason game. Here's what Pat Bev had to say. When I was in the huddle, I felt like Russ was in there with me. He was talking to the ref and he was talking to the coaches also. So uh, we weren't even talking about the last play. And everybody was like, okay. And then after the game, everybody was like, uh, you know, why do you do you like that? And I'm like, damn, what's going, what happened? They sent it to me. <laughs> Obviously, it's funny as hell. But hey, you know what? But I told I told him we told him on the plane, like, hey, Russ, anything you do, bro, they like go attack you. Like, so damn, I'm sorry you got to go through that. They try to kill my boy Russ. man. <laughs> I know. I, I honestly can't imagine it. It don't phase him. But, you know, as a human, you know, you got to keep your sanity in it because you kind of lose yourself. But man, mentally, he's been solid. Interesting, huh? Shannon, does this make you feel any better about the potential of Russ fitting with the Lakers this no, year? No, because they told him that. So why would they say what they said after the game? Why would his teammates say what his, they said after good, the game if question. it was no issue? Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, Skip. I've watched basketball since I was probably 11 years old. There's a lot of times the guys will huddle up, and if they got something to the official when the guy's shooting the free throw, you know you missed that call. Now, if you give him that call on this end, you know you need to give it to me on the other end. Yep. Or you can move out of the box, let somebody get there, and then you can go talk to Darvin Ham. Hey, Coach, man, you, you saw what they're doing, man. They're not giving me the calls down there. So there's a way Russ could have gotten to the huddle and still had a conversation with the officials mm -hmm. and yeah. had a conversation with the coaches, Skip. Yep. This is no excuse. But here's the thing. Well, you know, this is what I was – at some point in time, it can't be about you. It's got to be about the team. I understand what you normally would do. I understand that. But what about the team? Yep. So, in other words, you couldn't get – it couldn't be another moment. Hey, now you, now, you, now you see that call that you just gave him? Now, I am Russell Westbrook now. And, you know, I, I do have a name. I, I've done some things. I need to get the same call on the other end now. If you give it to him on this end, I need that call on the other end. And then you can relay what you need to re relay to Darvin Ham. Skip it to look. I'm tired of people making excuses for Russ. He is what he is. He's been this way. Why all of a sudden do you think he's going to change? He can't change because that's who he is. That's what made him the player that he became was doing it his way, being stubborn, the stick to itness that he's displayed. Yeah. Russ ain't going to change people. Mm. And then Pat Bev covering for him. I, I get it. I love Pat Bev, and I'm glad he do it. That's what teammates should do. But on the outside looking, on the outside, Russ, <clears throat> hold up. Mm. Russ doesn't want to be in L.A. Mm. He doesn't like his role, and he knows at some point in time the role that he has is going to be diminished even more. Mm. The Lakers don't want him there. They know that. He knows that. I know you don't want me. You know I don't want you. At some point in time, Skip, what, what's the best thing to do? If you're not happy, I'm not happy. We're together, and when, we're, when we get together, we're even more unhappy. Yep. We should. Mm -hmm. we, everybody knows the right thing. They're just holding on. They're just hanging in there for the kids, Skip. You know what it is. Well, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Eventually, even the kids ain't, ain't, ain't gluey enough to, stick, to make you stick, it in, stick in there. Man, look, I, I, like I said, I, I love what Pat Bev is trying to like, hey, man, trying to cover for him, but just, and this is not Russ. I, 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 we're going to talk about the Lakers a little later. They got other issues other than Russ, but it's just. It's, but, but this is the central issue. This is the one that undermined them the worst last year. This is the main reason they went 33 and 49. It was LeBron's injury. It was AD's injuries. Right. But it was Russ. Even though the numbers still looked pretty good, 19, 7, and 7. Not many could, could do that. Well, there's no. But, see, but here's the thing, Skip. The whole point was let Russ, when AD and LeBron was out, that's when Russ was supposed to be giving me 30, 10, and 10. That's when I needed that. Worst three-point shooter in basketball, fourth worst free throw shooter in basketball, led the league in turnovers per game until the bitter end when he didn't play the last three games. That's all you need to know because you can't rise above that no. when he's your starting point guard. No. So here's the irony of all these comments from Pat Bev, and I am a big fan of his yeah. because Pat Bev is the consummate professional. Yes. It, it, what's your line about him? If he's on your team, you love, <laughs> you love him. It. If he's on the other you team, hate you him. hate him. Well, that's been his M.O., that's been his calling card all the way up, and he had to fight his tail off to get out of the west side of Chicago 
and fight all the way through Greece and, and it, uh, Ukraine yeah. and, and when the G League yeah, or whatever, he, he, what he they call just it. Fought and fought and fought. And his calling card became his ability to irritate, to distract, to annoy. Mm-hmm. And he does it with, with clever trash talk, but he, but he has the biggest, strongest will of, of any little man that I know because he is unflappable. He is un, unshameable. He, he just says, I'm Pat Bev and you're not, and I'm going to keep doing what I do. Right. But it's, it's all part of his, his toolkit is to do that. But he doesn't take it personally. Russ took it personally, and I don't blame Russ because Pat tried to snake the ball from him and broke the unwritten rule when he had the ball under his arm, <laughs> and, and they, they hit knees, and it tore Russ's meniscus. Yeah. And it, sometimes you get a little tear, but this was a big tear. It tore all the way through. And it took two surgeries to fix it. And you can argue right now it could be affecting him as we speak. Correct. It's taking some years off the back end of his career thanks to that guy who was a thorn in his side. And it was personal for Russ. But Pat Bev doesn't take anything personal. That's how he plays basketball. That's part of being a professional to help your team by distracting and irritating the opponent. So now all of a sudden, as fate would have it only in Hollywood – they, they wind up as teammates. <laughs> it's impossible. And Pat Bev is doing what he would always do. As soon as he walks in the door, oh, he's my teammate now. He's my man. He's my boy. He's my, you know, he's yeah. my best friend. He, yeah. told, he said the first day, he's become my best friend on the team. Baloney, he has. Yeah. Let's put him on a lie detector and see if he's exactly. your best friend. You're trying to make him yours because that's the single best thing you could do for your team. So, so now Pat Bev. Look, Shannon, what's the irony here? What's the bitter irony? Guess who's going to replace Russ in the starting lineup? Patrick Beverly. Right. Well, what do you expect? Look, look at this quote. We told him on the plane. Well, Pat just got here. Yes. We? Yes. And it's like, all of a sudden, I'm a we. I'm over here with LeBron and AD, right? right? Where I, I showed you the video that night. Russ is sitting in street clothes in the middle of the bench. And the new big three is sitting at the end of the bench right. all together. One, two, three. LeBron, AD, Pat, Bev. They become the new big three or right. a threesome. I, I can't really include Pat, Bev in the big three. Right. But, but that's, he's in the but starting he's a vocal. He's become a voice. He's become a vocal leader of this team because that's who he is. That's he did it for the T Wolves yep. last year, right? right? He was their emotional, psychological leader. Right. Well, well, look at him now. He's already talking about a we told Russ on the plane. Hey, Russ, anything you do, they're gonna attack you. I'm sorry, you got to go through that, bro. <laughs> What are you talking? Does he understand what happened last year? Does he understand what Russ put Laker Nation through last year? Attack you? It's like Russ attacked them. He shamed <laughs> yeah, them. Exactly. It got so bad that he's in the corner, he's starting to shoot a three, and the whole, the, the whole crypt. No. no! Please <laughs> no. Does he not understand the history? What went on with Russ last year? Because. Yeah. He finally, his dream came true, and it became the ultimate nightmare nightmare for everybody watching. He just couldn't live up to the stage he was put on because he got exposed on a stage that was 10 times bigger than the Oklahoma City. It's 100 times bigger but than Washington or Houston or Oklahoma City especially. All of a sudden, you're on the biggest stage. You're a slam dunk first ballot Hall of Famer. You, for the previous five years, you averaged a triple-double, and all of a sudden, your dream came true, and you can't hack it. Because you got the worst pair of hands I've ever seen on a point guard in all my years watching basketball. Right. But the disappointment. But see, Skip, without expectation, there can be no disappointment. Because Laker Nation have expectations of titles, Russ was a disappointment. He didn't disappoint Washington because there's no expectations. He didn't disappoint once KD left OKC because there are no expectations. They had some expectations in Houston, but nobody expected them to keep competing to win a title. So there can be no disappointment. But when I have expectations, when I have expectations and I expect things to go a certain way, and they don't. Remember, what did Laker Nation think? What was the premise? LeBron and AD recruited him. Yes. They blessed him. Yes. They campaigned for Jeannie and Rob to go get him. Right. Bring him to L.A. We need him. Well, okay, once you get those two to bless you, then Laker Nation's going to say, oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Show us. Exactly. Go. And the thing is, Skip, and what was it? If AD's out, LeBron and Russ. If, Ru- if uh, 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 LeBron is out, AD and, and, and Russ. 
And if the both of those guys are out, we've seen Russ, what he does with lesser tier guys when he's by himself. He gets everybody involved. He'll 30 points, 20 assists, 15 rebounds. We've seen that. We saw none of that. None of that. We saw no, He didn't play well with AD. Nope. He didn't play well with Braun. He didn't play well with neither one of those guys within the starting lineup. So now what? As you pointed out, I see waning athleticism, and his game hinges on athleticism because for a while, the force that he created going to the basket was – it was pretty yeah, rare. Yeah, I, I'm not sure yeah, I've ever seen anything yeah, quite yeah, he, like yeah, the way yeah, he attacked the yeah, basket. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was. He was right there with D. Athleticism. He's right there with D. Rose. We know yep. how athletic D. Rose was before injuries robbed him. Okay, we know how athletic Russ was before injuries. Those knee injuries started robbing him of his athleticism. Yep. And because Kim, see guys like Kevin Durant and, and, and Steph, even though they will lose some of their athleticism. Yep. They still can shoot the basketball. That is correct. Well, if you can't shoot the no. basketball and now you're not as athletic, so that which means you can't get to the rim as freely. No. And then once you get there, you can't finish as freely. Then what? That's why LeBron, Skip, even though LeBron is not as athletic, he's found other ways to say, you know what? I'm going to build my post game up. And now he can hit you with the turnaround. Now he can still, he can up and under. He'll dive to the basket. At, at Russ, okay, now Russ. You've never been able to shoot the ball from the mid-range or the three. No. Nope. And the athleticism has started to rain, and you're not a great free throw. The, so. the, well, he used to be a decent free throw shooter, and he lost that completely. He, he's gone, what is it, th- three of the last four years he went under yeah. 70? And for a point and he was, but At one point, he was an 80% free throw shooter. That's what I'm saying. Well, I don't know where that went. At least you had that going for right. you. And, and he had, listen, for, for his size, he's got the best pair of shoulders I've ever yeah. seen for a man of that size. He could play through contact. He could play through contact. He could get to the free throw line. And when he was making 80, at least that was redeem, redemption. 